born in Hartford, Connecticut in the United States in 1967, just a few months before the Six Day War, a very important date in history here in Israel. Um, and I was born to uh, a Reform Jewish family, which means a kind of secular Jewish family. I think many Korean people, when they think of Jewish people, they think of the big black hats and the, the black dress and they're praying at the Western Wall or something like that. Well, many Jewish people are not like that and are, uh, if you came to America, you, you could not tell the difference between our family and, and other Americans who are not Jewish. But we are part of, instead of the Christian community or the Catholic community, we are part of the Jewish community. So I grew up without much religion. Um, I did not know the scriptures or the Bible very well at all. And when I was in high school, I began to really think about the meaning of life and what am I doing here and what's my purpose in life. And I started to read books of philosophy and also uh, Eastern religion, especially Buddhism. And then I went to university and I continued my studies and became very interested in uh, Zen Buddhism, which is a Japanese form. You, all, you also have it in Korea. Um, and I started to sit in meditation every morning and, you know, practice my breathing and meditation and all those kinds of things. And that search took me to Japan uh, in 1987. I went uh, as a student to learn Japanese and to study about Japan and, the, and well, the China, Korea, and Japan, but especially Japan. And uh, I, I got deeper and deeper into the Eastern, what we call Eastern mysticism meditation and yoga and things like this, searching for something. I, I understand now that I was searching for peace in my heart. I had no peace. There was so much uh, turmoil and hurt and pain in my heart from things in my childhood, and disappointments, um, that I was just looking to try to quiet and focus. It was very difficult for me. And through the meditation and Zen Buddhism, I found a little bit of peace. Every morning, sitting for an hour, something sort of mystical happens, you know. You find nothing, nothingness. But then you have to finish, you have to get up, you have to go and work. And that feeling would go away very quickly. And beginning to feel kind of like a stranger more and more and isolated in Japan. And one night, because it was in the countryside, the, you could see the stars very beautifully. And one night I stood on my, my balcony and I looked up at the stars and I prayed to God for the first time in my life. I looked up and I said, God, I don't know who you are or if you are, but someone must be there. Someone must have made all of this. And I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused. Help. That was my prayer. And nothing dramatic happened, but uh, in, over the next few months, I moved to Tokyo. And in Tokyo, I met some Christians. It's interesting. The first Christian I met was the boss of my company, and he was Chinese. So it was a Chinese Christian. And he, when he found out that I was Jewish, he began to talk to me about Abraham and David and Moses and people in the Bible, which I knew very, very little about. I was very embarrassed. So it's just like in Romans 11, where it says the Gentiles are supposed to provoke Israel to jealousy. Well, he kind of provoked me to some kind of jealousy. And so I went and I bought a Bible, an English Bible, and I started to read the Bible from the book of Genesis. As Jews, even though I was a secular Jew, we have enough education and my, you might even say brainwashing to know that we're not supposed to read the New Testament. The Old Testament, that's our book. The New Testament is their book. So I began to read the Old Testament. At the same time, they invited me to church. And I saw people from all over the world together as one family, and Japanese and Koreans together as one family, worshiping the Lord and with such joy. And very quickly I knew they, these people had something special that I didn't have, a kind of peace that was not depending on you had to sit like this for one hour every morning. It was a real something they could take with them, something that was with them all the time. And of course when I asked them about it, they all said, oh, it's Jesus. You have to understand the gospel. As a Jew, it was a little bit difficult, 
But I was open. I've been searching for the truth. So I've continued to read the Bible and see in, in the book of Deuteronomy, for example, some of the prophecies about what would happen to the Jewish people. And I had studied Hinduism and Buddhism and all the Eastern religions, and there was nothing like the Bible. It was history, real history, our people. So I began to pray to God, the God of our fathers, the God of my people. I said, God, I've been looking for you, the Creator, the one who made the stars and the heavens. Um, I'm ready. If this is true, what they're saying about Jesus, about the Messiah, that this is the only way to the Father to know you like they know you, I need to know. Show me. That was my prayer for a few months in the spring of 1992. Uh, in early June 1992, a group came of young people fasting and praying for outreach in Asia, and they came to Tokyo to do some special meetings, evangelistic meetings. And they did one of the meetings at, at this church, uh, actually at the auditorium upstairs. And they did like a musical drama in, with music in Japanese and in English of the life of Jesus, of his miracles, of his healing, of his teaching. And then, of course, at the end, his betrayal, uh, his trial, and ultimately his crucifixion. And I was in, a, in an auditorium with maybe 300 people. And as I was watching this play, um, when it came towards the end, when Jesus was betrayed, and then during his trial, something, it was like a switch in my head. Something happened and I just began to weep, almost uncontrollably. And for six or seven years of Zen Buddhism, you know, Zen Buddhism, you erase all emotion. So I hadn't cried or had any emotion for a long, long time, but it was something that just snapped as I watched what was happening to Jesus. And it, it was literally, with the tears, it was like my energy, my life was being taken out of me, kind of like a tire, with the air being sucked out of it, and the tire becomes limp. And, so, and that's what was happening to me. And I was literally, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I was brought to my knees. And as I was watching the drama, at this point in the drama, Jesus was carrying the cross, and the Roman soldiers were whipping him. And as I watched this, I heard a voice. For the first time in my life, it was not audible, not with my ears, it was in my mind, but it was not my normal train of thoughts. It came from, whoop, from a totally different place. And the thought he said, by his stripes you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. Which is a quotation from Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. I didn't know, I had not read the book of Isaiah yet. I had never heard or read this verse. The Lord spoke it, the Holy Spirit gave me this verse. By his stripes, his wounds, which I'm watching, him being hit and, and wounded, you are healed. And I knew that this was the voice. I knew that God was, was speaking. That this was an answer to my prayer. And so very quietly I said, okay, by his stripes I understand. I, Jesus is real, he's speaking, and I, I will follow you. I, I believe in you, I'm ready. As I said that, two things happened. One was a, like a tire with all of the air had been sucked out. Now suddenly with one pump, shoop, I was filled with an energy, with a new something. My hair stood up, I was shaking. And at the same time, I heard the voice again. This time, the voice was so loud in my mind, I thought I was hearing it. I looked around, nobody else was hearing it. And he said, I am with you, like that. And it repeated like a, like a thunderclap. I am with you, I am with you. <gasps> and I was transformed. And that's what happened to me. I was born again on the spot. Um, and from that moment, the, the reality of God, of Yeshua, of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit have just been the most normal thing in my life. First of all, for Jewish people, we have huge walls of religion from Judaism. Um, for 2,000 years almost, the rabbis, the leaders of Judaism, have been teaching people and building huge reasons and intellectual constructs against the faith in Jesus and against the New Testament. So even secular Jews, even Jews who don't read the Bible, don't 
participate in Jewish rituals. We have this strongholds of, of negative, very, very negative uh, imaging of like my father and grandfather, when they say something, something bad happens, they'd say, Jesus Christ, like it's almost like a curse, okay? So in order to overcome that, the Holy Spirit has to do something very powerful. Um, we need a real supernatural visitation. That's one reason. And the second reason is, is, is the prophetic timing and the place in history that uh, we know from, from the scriptures, from Luke 20, 21, 24, from Romans 11, that before the coming of the Lord, there was going to be a restoration of the Jewish people, of the Jewish nation, and of the Holy Spirit, of the faith, a remnant, uh, a serious revival happening among the Jewish people. And that is big in our generation, starting 30, 40 years ago, it's been a gradual increase, that is happening. And so there's a special time, a special grace uh, for Jewish people to be receiving very special revelation of, of Yeshua, of Jesus.